that they should have addressed. And I honestly think him losing sponsors could have been avoided if he just like addresses early on it rather than have it now mm. everybody comes up. David Julian Dobrik was born July 23rd, 1993. He is a Slovak-born American YouTuber and vlogger based in Los Angeles, California, who started his career on Vine and continued on to YouTube. All of Dobrik's videos are exactly 4 minutes and 20 seconds long. Originally, Dobrik wanted to stop vlogging on his 420th vlog, but decided to continue afterward. David was born in Kloszczyczka, Slovakia before moving to Ohio and then Chicago, Illinois when he was about 6 years old. He is currently a DACA recipient living in Los Angeles, California. He has three siblings named Esther, Sarah, and Toby. In his videos, he said that Toby Dobrik is his favorite sibling. In 2015, he met a YouTube and Vine star at the time named Liza Koshi and they began dating. And June 2018, David Dobrik and Liza Koshi announced their mutually amicable breakup after keeping it hidden from fans for six months. He started out on the now defunct six second mobile app Vine, where he was also popular, reaching over 1.3 million followers. On April 3rd, 2013, he uploaded his very first Vine video. He collaborated with many other Viners, such as Gabby Hanna, Alex Ernst, Brand Calavo, and Josh Peck. David regularly films with his friend group, labeled The Vlog Squad, which includes many other YouTubers such as Jason Nash, Carly and Aaron, Zayn Hijaz, Jonah, Karina Kopp, Scotty Sire, and Jeff Wittick. Beyond the internet entertainment, Dobrik's voice was also used in The Angry Birds Movie 2 from November 2019 to January 2020. He was one of the judges on Nickelodeon TV show America's Most Musical Family, hosted by the stars of the SpongeBob fan favorite special, and as of August 2020, host Discovery Channel's reality competition TV, Dodgeball Thunderdome. But with all that out of the way, you're not here for a biography on David Dobrik. You're here for the controversies. Let's get into those. Dobrik has a history of saying racial slurs and even asked a minor for sex at one time. Trisha Paytas uploaded a vlog dragging Dobrik, calling him a terrible friend and saying that he made her break up with Jason. In addition, he was also accused of abuse by two different people. This caused his comments section to be flooded with hate comments. It is also alleged that someone from his vlog squad was a quote unquote R word, which I can't use here on YouTube or my channel will be taken down. He finally addressed the allegations in a video called Let's Talk, but ironically, disabled likes and comments. Here is that apology video now, which was not taken well by the viewers. But I'm not just gonna play the apology in full. I'm gonna break it down and stop it at points to show you, not only has David Dobrik not become a better person, he's become even worse. Let's take a look. If I can address some conversations that have been going on on the internet. Um, I, you know, I've made over 600 videos and I've made a bunch of TikToks, Vines, Instagram stories, tweets, the whole thing. Um, and I'm obsessed with what I do. I love being able to make people happy for a living. And that's all that I want to do. Um, that being said, consent is something that's super, super important to me. So I'm going to stop you right there, David, because already we've got our first I guess, overlook by Mr. Dobrik here. And that overlook is November 2018 in a deleted vlog known as She Should Have Not Played With Fired. Dobrik is hanging out with a group of his friends, including former vlog squad members, Dirty Dom. In this video, Dom jokes that he has invited over a group of girls to have a fivesome with them. The girls are briefly included in the video while Dom aims sexual jokes and commentary at them. With a friend or shooting with a stranger, I always make sure that whatever the video I'm putting out, I have the approval from that person. Once again, I have to stop the apology because approval is not something that Dobrik is concerned with. In fact, he hasn't gotten a lot of people's approval on a lot of projects, including his very own app that he made for the iPhone. On September 2020, a five-part TikTok series about a young man named Kareem offers his application to be a designer for Dobrik's new app. In the videos, Kareem suggests the name of Dispo, which leads Dobrik to comment on his TikTok saying he loved the name and would be in touch. Kareem later reveals Dobrik did not hire him. This means not only did Dobrik run away with the name of the app, but also the idea of the creation and of course, 
all the money made by said app, giving Kareem none of it and no appreciation or credit. Um, and I also acknowledge that those times where a person can change their mind and they decide that they no longer want to be associated and no longer want to be in the video that I'm putting up and then I'll take the video down. And there's also been moments where I've looked back on videos and I realized that these don't represent me anymore and they're hurtful to other people. Once again, got to call them out on this one because on February 16th, 2021, Paytas, that is Trisha Paytas, goes to H3H3 Podcasts on Frenemies to reveal that more disturbing allegations have been made against Dobrik. She claims Dobrik hid while she had sex with her boyfriend Jason Nash and filmed her naked without her consent. Nash was aware of the prank, however, Paytas claims there was no consent given because I was dating Jason, because I was a participant in the vlogs. That's my consent? She also asked Dobrik not to post the video titled, quote unquote, I snuck into their hotel room, surprise. The video is still live and currently has more than 14 million views. And I don't, I don't want them up because I've, I've grown, you know, as a content creator and as a person and I don't agree with some of the videos I've posted. Um, with the Seth situation, I'm sorry to Seth because I like it. Ah uh, yes, the Seth situation. Seth releases a video titled Accountability to All Creators that outlines all the negative and racist situations he experienced while part of the vlog squad. The video includes clips of Dobrik and his friends joking about taking Seth to the police station, doing blackface, offering him watermelon, and labeling him their only black friend. But it doesn't stop just there for Seth Francis. He comes back on February 12th, 2021 and makes a guest appearance on the same H3H3 podcast and speaks about the infamous kissing prank incident of 2017. Explaining this in the most simple way that I possibly can, they've taken a girl and put a mask on her and had Seth kiss her. While she's being kissed by him and he has his eyes closed, they remove her and replace her with a man wearing a mask. He is now kissing a man that he doesn't even know is a man. It's a totally different person and they have not asked him about this at all. Not only that, later one of Dobrik's friends decided that he would try and get Dobrik out of this tough situation. His friend Jeff shows messages asking if it's okay if they film such a scene with Seth. Seth says okay in the messages and he's literally showing his phone on camera. But this is not actually the case. It's found out later that Seth was approving of a completely unrelated video. It did not consent to any of this at all. Seth, because I, like I said, I, I would just want to make videos where everybody in it, you know, whether you're participating or watching, is enjoying and having a good time. What David did not understand after posting this apology was that the good times were over, the enjoyment was finished, and no one approved of this apology whatsoever. This apology was not heartfelt whatsoever, was merely a two minute long apology, ran through all the events, didn't actually cover any of the things he was called out for, talk about specific situations, or even fix any of the problems he had had in the past. Like simple things, taking down a video for instance, still not fixed to this day. And from here guys, it only gets worse. But Dobrik's not done, he comes back with a longer apology. Why? Not because he's sorry, not because he's losing 200,000 subscribers, but because the sponsors are pulling the money from underneath his channel. Hi guys, it's um, 1.45 in the morning and I'm finally by myself, <laughs> which I know doesn't sound that crazy to be by yourself at 1.45 in the morning, but um, this week's been pretty hectic and there have been a lot of people, um, a lot of people around telling me what to do, giving me advice, 
Um, I've put myself in a lot of situations where I've needed to apologize for my past actions and I've never done this correctly and I've never done this respectfully and my last video is a testament to that. I, I, I don't want to defend that video. I don't want to delete that video. I just want to be clear. What this video isn't going to be is it's not going to be me discrediting Trisha, Kat, or any other woman involved. Um, I'm going to be using words um, that may trigger some survivors and that's just so I don't explain anything vaguely and I can explain every situation appropriately. I want to start this video off by saying I fully believe the woman who came out against Dom and said she was by him. Um, as it was reported, the next day I got consent to post the video. Even though I got the consent to post that video, I should have never posted it. And I, what I understand now, and I didn't understand before, is that she sent that text because she felt like she had to, not because she wanted to. So does David finally fix everything and make claim that he's the one at fault and that all this is on him and he's going to do as much as he can to individually apologize to everyone and fix all these situations? No. Instead, you better get that bus ready because he's about to throw the whole vlog squad under it. At this point, multiple YouTubers making videos, exposés, analyzing this apology, tearing it down bit by bit. But the person who probably said it best of all people was Trisha Paytas. It's just My stuff brother. that they should have addressed. And I honestly think him losing sponsors could have been avoided if he just like addressed this early on it rather than have it now mm. everybody comes up. When Trisha Paytas starts telling you how you need to handle your drama, and get everything packed away and in order, you know you done fucked up. Dobrik is in a race to try and repair his claim to fame and keep his place amongst the YouTube stratosphere. Sadly, YouTube demonetizes all of his channels. All of his sponsors slowly slip away in the shadows of the night and Dobrik is left out in the cold to recover. It's time to take a break, Mr. Dobrik, and that's what he does from the internet for a while, and then comes back to do what? Injure his best friend. What else would you do when you come back? Corinna gets on it, and then David starts moving it. It's like, this shot looks so sick. This looks beautiful. the thing comes off and it starts falling down and Corinna's like, well, what the fuck, put me down, put me down. She's like, you take things too far, David. I just jumped out of a plane 20 times. What's the worst that could happen if I swing from a rope over a one foot deep lake? And yeah, I didn't know I was gonna go that fast. So I grabbed the fucking rope and I tried to make a goddamn funny video for people. But this is where I made a mistake. I forgot that the biggest fucking idiot I know was driving it. Oh shit! Oh shit! But whoa, 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 whoa. We gotta back up just a little bit because the wheels are coming off and we need to go back over what exactly has gone down. According to Dobrik Social Blade, Dobrik loses another 100,000 subscribers on March 17th, 2021. On March 18th, 2021, Dobrik's longtime sponsor, SeatGeek, states they are reviewing their partnership with him and end it. On March 19th, 2021, Dollar Shave Club ends its partnership with Dobrik. On March 19th, 2021, EA Sports, a company that gifted Dobrik a Lamborghini back in 2019, has stated they are now distancing themselves from Dobrik and his vlog. March 20th, 2021, Dobrik's vlog channel loses 66 million views in a single day. And finally, on March 21st, 2021, Vlog Squad member Jeff Wittick, the man you just saw injured in the past video, posts another video titled My Truth attempting to distance himself from an insider report. In the video, he denies buying alcohol for underage victims and shares audio of a phone call with an inside reporter known as Cat, during which he attempts to clear his name. 
where it claims that Paytas, that is Trisha Paytas, is the only one who remembers him buying the alcohol. But according to the insider report, the victim's friend and designated driver recalls Wittick and another vlog squad member, Todd Smith, returning to the party with whiskey. Here is that interview now from the Black Wolf Company. Hannah is an anonymous account and she told it to me a few weeks prior to publication, but over a year before that, she actually reached out to another reporter, a colleague of mine. That reporter couldn't publish it because she's always wanted to be anonymous and not every publication will let you run anonymous accounts from people involved with social media allegations. The accusation of a young woman named Hannah being assaulted back in 2018, whilst many members of the group were present and filming for a video, caught a lot of people off guard. I think what surprised people about Hannah's story is that she wasn't a YouTuber. She wasn't involved in the scene at all. She was really just somebody who, by chance, stumbled into the vlog squad and the environment that they had created and walked away with really serious repercussions. Hannah was really sort of an innocent bystander. Her interest in getting the story out there was purely to spread awareness. She didn't want this story to come up and have that be associated with her. And the other thing is that since David has such a gigantic fan base and the vlog squad is so followed and so beloved, she didn't want to have to deal with all of the pushback and blowback from his stands. Hannah's story was that former vlog squad member Dominicus Zaglatus, or Dirty Dom, was accused of indecently assaulting her when she was far too intoxicated to give consent. She was invited, along with her college friends, to hang out with some members of the vlog squad after Zaglatus had messaged them asking to hook up. Some of them were fans of Dobrik's channel and knew how the vlogs worked, so they inquired with Zaglatus to see if he would be in character, as he supposedly portrayed a sex addict in the vlogs, whatever that's supposed to mean. The girls were taken to an apartment where the vlog squad were filming and filed into the main room where the members were waiting. The premise of the stunt was revealed beforehand and the goal was to get Zaglatus his first threesome. The girls are seen sitting down, drinking and talking to members of the vlog squad, and then it cuts to Dobrik with a voiceover. By some stroke of luck and master negotiating, Dom made progress. <laughs> the video was a gross and apparent abuse of power by a group of men who had the intent of objectifying a group of young women for content. Didn't I tell you the vlog squad was just as responsible and also thrown under the bus for this one? Not to mention a lot of what they've done is disgusting stuff. It just keeps getting worse from here. March 22nd, Reddit co-founder and leader of venture capital firm 776, Alexis Ohanian, distances himself and his company from David Dobrik. March 22nd, 2021, sponsor Frank's Red Hot Chipotle, Bumble, and SeatGeek officially announced they will not be partnering with Dobrik anymore. March 24th, Dobrik is removed from the lineup of creators on the YouTube special no Place for Hate, an anti-bullying tour. March 25th, YouTube temporarily suspends David Dobrik and Dirty Dom. Finally, in April 22nd, 2021, after months of dodging rumors, Jeff Wittick, the man you saw injured in the past video, uploads a multi-part documentary called don't try this at home. On April 21st, which explains an accident that he suffered last year, the one you just saw in the video, which broke parts of his face and skull and required him to have surgery for Dobik's comeback vlog in June 2020. The vlog squad went on a wakeboard in a shallow lake pulled by excavator operated by David Dobrik. Yes, that's the man swinging everyone around in that video. At one point, Karina Colt swings directly from the line but when it starts to fall down, she yells that she wants to get off, though Dobrik doesn't immediately let her do that. You take things too far, she says. You can hear her yelling it at Dobrik. When Wittick tries wakeboarding, Dobrik swings him even higher, abruptly stops, and causes Wittick to crash into the machine, then into the water, with his foot still caught on the line. This is where I made a mistake, Wittick says in a voiceover. And wow. What a mistake. This ended up costing Jeff Wittick almost his entire YouTube career and eyesight in his eye. Luckily, it was recovered, but only after nine different surgeries. 
This wasn't a small boo-boo. This was a catastrophic injury that destroyed half of this man's face. Now, unlike David Dobrik, Jeff wasn't ready to just throw David under the bus and toss him aside and say, what a horrible friend who injured me. Instead, Jeff stood up for David and in fact came forward saying, David's taking care of me. He's looking after me. He's making sure I'm okay. Until it was later revealed that David had tossed Jeff out like yesterday's trash. Not able to keep up with the vlog squad, not able to make new YouTube videos, gonna be in the hospital just because you were injured by my antics? Oh well, bye friend, talk to you never. Here's what Jeff had to say. Has David messaged you to see if you're okay? Nope, not a text or nothing. Uh, not surprised, you know? It is what it is, but I'm done being fake friends with that motherfucker. So that that's right guys not a phone call not a text not a hello how you're doing not a stop by the hospital and check on your friend that you know you almost killed you almost made him lose eyesight you almost fractured and destroyed the side of his face um gross what kind of person does this who doesn't go visit a friend when they're in an accident. Like if your best friend is in an accident, a car accident, something that has nothing to do with you, you're probably gonna go visit them. If you are the person who caused the accident and it almost killed them, you're not gonna go see them? Who does that? What kind of human does that? This is the real LA lifestyle showing through on David Dobrik. You know, I just had a discussion with a fan on Twitter about this and I call it the trampoline effect. Let's talk about that trampoline effect. So many stars, and this is Hollywood and this is YouTube. They get that big springboard up into the air and just start them with that first big jump on YouTube or Hollywood, whatever. I guess for David right now, it's a little bit of both since he's doing Discovery. And as they skyrocket into the air, they have two choices. They either grab their friends to jump along with them so that when they finally come back down and level out, all those friends are still there waiting for them. Or if they don't, and they just let everybody sit on the ground while they pull vault into the air, when they come back down, they're gonna find that trampoline very empty of friends and family. And I think what we're seeing here is that effect on David. On top of it, we've got another layer. David seems to be a fake friend. If there's one thing I've started to understand is there's very many people on YouTube that have a YouTube personality and then a off of YouTube personality. From what I hear, Mr. Beast is the type of guy who on and off screen seems to be a sweetheart. The guy passionately cares about being altruistic and making the world a better place. Off screen, he's doing that too for his employees, his friends, his family, YouTubers, etc. David Dobrik on the other hand, what have we seen him do with all the big money that he's made? Completely indulge in hedonistic activity and when someone gets injured, when someone gets hurt, when someone gets sexually harassed, when someone gets abused, he comes out with the lightest of apologies only to keep his brands. And when those brands finally disappear, well, he moves on to his friends. And when those friends disappear, well, maybe he'll move to TV. But guess what? Discovery shows don't last for infinite seasons. And when that finally goes away and he has to come on back to humble little YouTube town, I don't think he's going to find a lot waiting there for him. We'll see how it plays out from here, and I'll follow up with an update video if you guys are so inclined. Let me know in the comments below, where do you think David Dobrik's career is going to go after his Discovery Channel show is done and he has to humbly bow back into YouTube? What do you guys think of the current situation with Jeff Wittick? How do you think he should handle it? Should he sue David? Because he definitely has a chance for a lawsuit here. Should David be paying everything out to this guy? I think so, at least his medical bills, at least all the different things that he had to go through, trauma, psychological, his face reconstructive surgery. I, you know, there's so much more. Lost time on YouTube where he could have been making money. I don't know. It's a messy situation. And I got to say, from a guy who started humble grassroots in the Vine area and made it all the way up to Hollywood, Discovery Channel shows, he may have risen to the top, but my own personal view of him has fallen drastically. Until next time, I've been the Inksmith, and I'll talk to you again real soon.